Okay, so we're in the sump now. We've got the baffle, whatever you call it, plate off. I'll just show you what we found in here. Some of the chain guides is in here. There's broken, yeah, dropped it. Broken thread. Little bits of the chain guide in here as well. Um, so yep. Yeah. So I'm just going to take this out and this out, which is the level sensor. And hopefully take it to my mate who's going to put it through his parts washer and get it as clean as he can for me. So yeah. Well, I've got my forensic gloves on for this examination. Uh, I've got the oil pickup pipe. And look at all the nice chain guide bits sat in there. Hopefully the mesh has done its job, but I may end up just swapping this one out for one that hopefully hasn't got a load of chain guides stuck in the bottom of it. I'll see how good I can clean it up, but I might just swap over the other one. Make it a bit easier on myself. So yeah, all the bits out of the sump stripped, sensors out, sump plugs out, baffles out. So this is ready to go hopefully and get a nice wash. Okay, so it's finally in its first coast of first coat of paint. There are some areas where I just ran out of patience and I just couldn't quite get the last little bit of grit and grime off. But um, yeah, it's a it's a sump. No one's going to see it. Uh, but it's looking fresher. Inside is a lot cleaner. We've got rid of all the last little bits of chain guard and whatever bolts are in there. So it's all clean inside. I'll show you in a bit later when we rebuilt it. So it's just in a bit of a uh, single coat at the moment, just a fairly light coat. It goes on pretty, pretty thick. This stuff, so don't, don't hang around. Just get a sweeping light coat over it and just build it up like that. So I'm gonna let that dry and then um, do a few more coats. And in the meantime, probably crack on with the engine. So I just wanted to show you the benefit of the brake cleaner thing. So what I do first is go over it with some WD or this stuff is quite good with a brush or something as well to agitate the dirt. And then we come in with the brake cleaner and you'll just see how it flushes out all the dirt. Here we go. And then fairly quickly that'll dry off and you're left with the dry deposits of the oil which you brush off and then repeat the process so brake cleaner is very good for just flushing out the cleaning stuff that you're using to agitate all the dirt off and that's how I get it as clean as I can before painting so after all the patience of cleaning and scrubbing you can lay some paint down and it starts to look presentable needs another coat or two yeah not too bad let's hope it dries quickly because i think we've got some rain coming all the joys are working outside anyway let's see what happens you can see we're trying to do some work on the carport not quite going to plan just yet but um hopefully we'll have a resolution for that and we can work somewhere dry at last we shall see. so this is the extent that you go to when you haven't got an outside drying place This is a level of, you know, quality professionalism you've come to expect from this channel. Uh, but yeah, I think I might have to stand guard here for a bit. Make sure it doesn't blow off. <sighs> so whilst it's uh, raining outside, we will uh, carry on with the little job inside here so this is the new light and fly wheel from our friends at Courtney Sport and um, one of the things we have to do is um, expand or drill out the holes on the clutch cover to fit on these studs so I'm just measuring up um, quite how big the studs are mm -hmm. So we need a we need an eight mil hole. And what we've got is an eight mil hole. <laughs> Measure that again. Uh, 
Okay, so some of the holes are smaller than the others for some reason. So that's why it doesn't fit. So some are seven mil, some are eight mil. So we just need to increase these smaller holes um, up to eight mil, and then that should pop on there. And there we go, a nice snug fit for this clutch cover. So that is ready. We've got a clutch alignment kit so that we can get this nice and straight. Um, obviously, flywheel needs mounting first, but that's ready for when we put the engine back together. And this is how the ECU turned out, the one that I didn't actually microwave. <laughs> um, so that's looking okay. Let's go back in the car too. Just thought I'd better show you so that you don't see, see the results of things. Well, it's been a productive day. Um, I've been working on this engine stand lift frame whatever you want to call it put some feet on whoop, some feet on for some wheels to bolt to you've added these gussets for a little bit of extra strength whilst you're wheeling around the garden and then giving it a lick of paint so i think that's me done for the day i'm ready to call it a day so thanks for watching again ow watch into that thanks for watching again and uh, I'll see you in the next one so I was hoping to get this uh, little assembly back together um, we've this is a um, water pump thermostat and housing and the pipe between I've put some PTFE tape on the drain plug and on the coolant temperature sensor so they shouldn't leak but what I'm annoyed about is that I had a better seal than this out of the newer engine but somehow I've lost it so I've dug this one out of the older engine and it just seemed to sit more flat really against that face so what I could really do with is somehow well, a, a new seal would be good but I'm not sure if you can get one I've had a quick look and I'm not sure how long I can wait for one but what I might have to do is just sort of lay a bead of silicon in there just to give this a bit of a higher seating point. I don't know. So that's thoughts for that. To put this back in, uh, I was going to wipe a bit of Vaseline on it. I couldn't find a full jar. So I've got this lovely lip therapy version just to uh, squeeze these O-rings back in either end of here. Um, so a little bit of a hiccup there, we shall see how I get on with that. Uh, I've got this fuel uh, fuel rail cleaned up, ready for a lick of paint, um, which I shall do shortly. Well, up here in the uh, loft slash paint spray booth, we've got the cam cover in. Um, I gave this a really good clean up and a good wipe down, etc. And I'm trying out this stuff. From Auto Tech. No idea if it's any good, we shall find out. But just again, laying a very thin coat. So, this is the first coat, looks quite brown and orange at the moment. Um, so, we'll see what it looks like after a few more coats. So I said I'd show you how clean this sump was inside, so I mean it isn't spotless but it's a hell of a lot cleaner than it was before. I've 
squirted a load of uh, WD and what have you through here so I know that that's all cleared out and yeah ready to put back together when we get the opportunity so what I think I'm going to try and do is sacrifice one of these gaskets that I got it sits um, below well probably like halfway in that gap so that's going to be a packer basically to this gasket something like that <laughs> Well, I'm going to call this the end of the weekend, so you can catch up now. Um, this is the rear engine mount that I've sprayed up in the meantime, and this is the fuel rail which is sprayed up as well. Um, I thought I had a solution for this. I was thinking I could sacrifice this gasket as a bit of a packer, but it's probably too thick. So, a little bit stuck on that. But I'll keep thinking in the meantime. Enjoy your week and I'll be back soon. The the cam cover, which is looking rather orange, um, might need a second go really because it's looking rather orange and there's a few blemishes and what have you. So we'll see how that cam cover turns out. That'll probably be in the next video. So thank you for watching this one and bearing with me. It's a lot of just boring stuff at the moment whilst we try and get everything prepared to slot the engine all back together. So for now, see ya and uh, I'll be back shortly I guess in a few days. Cheers for now.